Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live program tonight, live from the uh, offices of First Baptist West and especially Elizabeth's desk. And so we're excited to have you all here tonight. We have a great program in store for you and we're looking forward to a lot of good things happening here. Uh, first thing that, that I want to do is introduce our, our people. First of all, our senior spotlight tonight will be uh, Joseph Kelly. He'll be on here in just a little bit. We also have part of our praise team will be here. Uh, Keith Saar and Kaylee Kors. They're both going to be joining us here in just a little bit. I do want to uh, mention very quickly, first of all, as you noticed, if you weren't able to see Sunday, uh, because it wasn't quite as close as what we are here right now, praise the Lord, I got my Corona haircut. It, it, it's finally, I don't have the wings. As a matter of fact, John, your wife said... It's a, a miss her miss the wings and she wanted me to fly away. So uh, anyway, uh, got a haircut, feel much better. I don't know how much better I look, but that's okay. It's all about the feel. Hey, I do want to mention very quickly also about the introduction. Many of you have asked about uh, the start time. Well, we'll go live with this at 630. But what we do is we allow people because we've had some mention of having a little difficulty maybe getting plugged in immediately. So at 6.30, you're going to see our logo come on, and then there'll be some music. We usually wait about two minutes and give people time to log on, as we do now. We have Teresa Warner here. Randy is there. Randy's here and there. Uh, Kay Anderson, uh, your mom's watching. Joseph. Uh, we have Martha and Paula Chambers. and So that's what we're trying to do. Marie Johns is here. We're just trying to give people time to to join in and then we'll we'll kick off the program. So just to give you a little bit of update about why we do that. So usually if you'll get on at 6.30, you'll see the logo and then about 6.32, uh, then we'll, we'll get this thing going. So again, just hang on. If you get there at 6.30 and all you see is the sign, that's okay. We're getting ready to get started. But we're gonna start our show off tonight like we always do with three things that you should know about First Baptist West. John, let's go. All right, three things that, that you should know uh, for First Baptist West. First of, and foremost is our church start back. Uh, I, I want to tell you that I am excited. Man, we, we are looking, we're just a few weeks away from being able to have our services here at First Baptist West. Uh, we're going to start those on uh, May 31st, uh, first Sunday. We'll do an 8 o'clock service and a 1045 service. And uh, just really, really excited about that. Now, what, what we're going to do is uh, starting tomorrow or the next few days, we're going to send out a video of all the, the plans of getting started back up. We're not going to go over those too much tonight, uh, but there will be some announcements coming over the next few days uh, about how we're going to do things. Now, they're going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, we're, we're not just going to be able to walk in and go wherever you want. We're going to have seating arrangements, uh, things like that. People coming in uh, in a different style, leaving out differently than what we've been able to do before. But I got to talking about it and with the seating arrangement. And uh, one of the things is you may not be able to sit, and I know this may go tough for everybody, but you may not be able to sit in the same seats you usually sit in before just because of, of the way we go but now here i thought about it the other day you know a lot of people go to concerts and they pay that extra money to get front row center well i i, I have a feeling that if you'll treat me like a maitre d and give me a, a few extra pennies there i might get you the back row center how about that because that's what people were those are the good seats in church apparently but anyway that was a joke don't please don't tip me anything i was just kidding but uh church is starting back uh on may 31st and again i can't wait Cannot wait to get to see you, some of you in church on that Sunday. Number two is the M28 Ministries. We fed again yesterday. Now, we had 309 people uh, that we fed. Uh, the, our average now is about 325. So I want to say thank you to everyone who's still staying on with this, having a good part in this, providing us with food. Um, cooking, volunteering to go over and serve. We had several wanting to do that. And I want to ask you that if you would be willing to help us in any way, contact us here at the church because we're still going to be needing vegetables, desserts, breads, things like that every Tuesday. So please help us with that. Now, you know that I've said before that it's easy to start a ministry. The difficult part is to keep it going. 
And we're in what I would call the difficult part now because we're going into several weeks of this. Uh, we're still going to be doing this for some time now. Uh, so please, now is not the time to, to set back. Now is the time to do the difficult work and keep the ministries going. So uh, please help us any way that you can. Again, with vegetables, uh, with desserts, snack cakes, anything like that, and of course, uh, the breads. And just let us know also if you'd be willing to go over on a Tuesday uh, to help serve. I know we've had some of our people going over there. We'll get you in contact with Jean Peterson as she is the one heading that up for us. So we're really excited about that. Dwayne, Paul, Kathy, good to see everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining in as well tonight. Number three of the things that you need to know. I've got something here. And this is, this is something I'm also really excited about. You remember the last couple of years, we've done a family kite day at First Baptist West. And what we do is we, on Memorial Day weekend, which is going to be May 24th, uh, we're going to have a kite day. Now, what we do with Kite Day is that we're going to, normally we'll meet here, we'll have worship services, we'll have lunch, and then we'll all go out and we'll play games, we'll fly kites and just have a great time. Well, this year we're not going to be able to do that as far as meeting here at the church. But what I'm wanting to do is I want to encourage you to take and with your family that weekend, and if you would, um, take your family out and, and fellowship together, have a cookout, fly kites, and then what we would like for you to do is to post those pictures uh, through uh, your web page or your Facebook page and let us see those. Let us celebrate Family Kite Day. Now, something special that we're going to do is this next week, uh, Carrie and I and anybody else that would like to, we're actually going to deliver some kites. Well, I'm really excited about that. I, a couple last week or so, I got to deliver some mints. Well, we're, we, we bought some kites for you and for the kids, and we're going to be bringing those to you. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of you, all you kids. We're looking forward to seeing you. And now these kites are going to be really special. They're going to be blank white kites. Because what we're wanting you to do is we're wanting you, once we give those kites, you put them together, and then we want you to decorate your kite. And so if you would do that and then, again, post those pictures, let us see what you've done. And then when you go out as a family and fly those kites, post those pictures as well. We're going to be giving you a hashtag to be able to put on there so that we can all identify uh, you flying those kites. So join with me on that Saturday and Sunday. Again, not together, but we're going to be flying kites and we want you to, to be a part of that with us. So uh, please think about that and, and hopefully we'll get to see you next week when we bring you, uh, bring you those kites and give you a chance to uh, operate. Now, also uh, for Adam Perry, I want if, 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 if anybody's watching, tell Adam, I definitely want to watch him fly his kite. Man, the last couple of years, he's had this one kite that flew up forever. And so Adam, I'm looking forward to seeing if you can match it this year, we're going to. We're, I want to see that. All right. So anyway, thank you uh, for joining in. Those are three things that you need to that you should know about First Baptist West. Well, before we uh, get on with Joseph here in just a second, I got a couple things I want to just talk about. First of all, last week was Mother's Day, and uh, we had a special some special things going on with our services. And you'll remember uh, that we started off with a. Uh, a video of, of the babies. We did a baby recognition with all the families. I have had tons of comments about how much people really just enjoyed seeing those babies and how it made them smile and feel good. So, so with that, I think what we're going to do, I've decided, I think we're going to just find baby pictures from now on. We're going to start off every worship service with about three minutes of of baby pictures so all y'all will feel happy again, feel good, and put us in the mood to worship. But I want to thank those families who sent in pictures, and uh, thanks Randy and John who put all of our stuff together all the time, and we had a great time with that. The second thing that I want to do is I want to give you, a couple weeks ago I showed you my puzzle uh, that that uh, uh, Robert Noddick gave me, that 4,000 piece puzzle. Well, remember, here's a picture of the first one. That's what it looks like just in piles. But I showed you, I want to give you an update of where I am with my puzzle to this point. So the second picture shows us kind of at a, a stage there. You see things are kind of piecing together a little bit. Uh, we're moving right along. And then the third picture that I want to show you, uh, there you see the water is now complete. We're getting that bridge almost done. Then the fourth picture, we're just a little bit farther along. So things are happening there. 
as I'm seeing on the picture there. And then I want to give you an update of where I am with my puzzle today. So if you'll take a look at this picture, that shows where I am. You see the trees now are, are coming in. The church is done. Uh, we got a lot of things going on. Man, I am. I am moving along with that puzzle. So uh, thank you, Robert Nodick, for giving me an obsession. And I want people to understand that just because I'm obsessed with puzzle does not mean I love puzzling. So just, just keep that in mind, okay? Also, a couple of weeks ago, we did a top 10 list of knowing that you've been in quarantine for too long. Well, I, Kathy Baxter sent me this today, and I wanted to show you this. This was her picture, and the heading of it was, uh, John, do you have that? or Okay. Uh, the heading for that was, she said, you know you've been in quarantine when what you do is you read your online Bible study to your dogs. So uh, hopefully they're listening, paying a whole lot of attention. Probably, Kathy, hopefully they're paying better attention than some people when I'm preaching. So... Uh, uh, appreciate that. So if you've got some things that, that shows that you've been in quarantine too long, go ahead and send those to us and we'll be sure to put them on the air. Well, the last thing I want to do before uh, Joseph comes on is last week we did a, a, a countdown of our loan. Well, I tell you what, that was so exciting to me that what I decided to do was we're going to do it again. For some of you that may not have gotten to see, but we've got, that's our loan balance right there when we started $1,462,281.75. But we're going to show you where we are now. And John, let's roll that one more time, man. Let's get excited. Oh, watch the numbers go. We're down, going. Yeah! $999,000. We're below a million. Folks, that's what we've been waiting on. Just celebrate. We're excited about this. And I, man, I just can't get enough of it. We're just going to enjoy it for a second. There you go. Amen. That was a lot of, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I do, because again, that's a great, great milestone. And thank you for your faithfulness and all that you're doing. So as we get ready to go tonight, uh, we just wanted to to show you the three things you, you should know, and also just a couple things that are going on with our church. Well, real quick, let's go ahead and introduce our special guest here with for us tonight. And many of you know uh, Joseph. This is Joseph Kelly. Hello. And uh, Joseph is our second senior. You're the second one to get to do this. And Joseph, thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Glad and, to be uh, here. Man, I, I, when Joseph yeah. walked in, man, I was like, another person yeah and we were excited how long has it been we probably haven't seen each other like two months probably yeah two months man and it's, it is great yes. to see you so how are you i'm good i'm like i said earlier i'm glad to see other people <laughs> you yeah well, I'm glad I'm part of that. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. You too. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you. It's good to see you. Yeah. So, so how are you doing? Everything I'm, going all right? Uh, yes. Just trying to, like everyone, adjust to this new way of living. But uh -huh. um, life's good. And what, what you and your family been doing during the quarantine? How y'all? How y'all handling this? Well, I have all my brothers home, and I have an additional brother home. I, uh, a buffalo, buffalo is here. Woo. So uh, we now go. That's a, you get buffalo in with y'all. That's a packed house, man. <laughs> yes. Buffalo's huge. So. Oh, uh, we've been going through food a lot. That's one thing. And yeah. um, just trying to give each other space, but we're around each other all the time. So all try not to get in time. fights. Yes, all yeah. the time. All right. Well, good. So you're handling it okay, though? Yes. Actually, we uh, picked up a few new hobbies, which involve fighting. Uh, <laughs> we bought some boxing gloves and we wrestle. So oh my we bought gosh. mouth guards also. So it's Man, not so... You know what you ought to do? You, as big as all you guys are... Mm. You ought to do a pay-per-view. And that's what, John, well, that's our next program, buddy. We're going to we, do pay-per-view boxing. Yeah, we definitely yeah. had a good one right before I came here. <laughs> Philippe, <laughs> Philippe and I, we had probably, probably the most intense one yet. Before you were going to come on TV, yeah, you decided I was, to go for a boxing match. Yeah, I was hoping, I was like, just hope my eyes don't look like I was just boxing. Philippe was bringing some, some energy. He brought it, did More he? than I wanted to bring. <laughs> So. Did you did you tell him, hey, dude, the face, come on, watch the face. Well, I'm, I'm going to go on TV here in a little I've bit. I've kind of learned, like, you don't want to make it, those kind of excuses with <laughs> there because then they're like, oh, you're just soft or so, you know. Yeah. It, but. Wow. Okay, yeah, we got to do a for you for y'all, man. I, I can be the ring announcer. Yeah. I can be well, the promoter. Of course. Now, if the church people want to see it, then. We can do that. Hey, we can pay off the building loan. Dude. That, that number could go a lot down a lot faster than we do this paper. Well, if that's what you want. Then. Unless you guys charge too much to. No, for well, your right now it's just free. So, it's free. <laughs> so good idea. So, so you're basically you're done with school this year, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you went to what white high school? I went to Eisenhower, Eisenhower. Eisenhower High School. Best okay. school in Lawton. Best school in Lawton. Yes. Okay. 
Well, now you just started, and there may be more people wanting to get behind the box with you now. Lawton and Cash. Oh, Lawton and Cash. Oh. The whole Lawton and Cash area. Okay, is, best yes. school in the whole area. All right. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll do that. So, what are some things you were involved in while you were in high school? Um, well, for the first few years in high school, I was in JRTC. Um, later, like this year, I was in track and cross country. Uh -huh. Those are my two favorite things that I was involved in, okay. was track and cross country. So, what were some of the awards? You're uncomfortable, well, so I'm not asking you to brag on yourself. Just sure. explain to us, because I'm proud of you. I know that you've worked hard for mm -hmm. a lot of these things. What were some of the awards that you were able to get this year? Um, this year, uh, I got an award for kind of like a combination of athletic and academics from school. Um, so they said it's an award that I, I'm not sure the name of it, mm -hmm. but I got one for that. Um, I remember the cross country season. Me and two of my other cross country teammates, we uh, got top 10 in the Big Ten Conference, which wow. was the best cross country thing I've gotten. Right. And I say those probably some of the okay. best things I've gotten this year. Well, good. Well, congratulations on those. Thank Again, you. I know you work extremely hard uh, for everything that you do. And work so moderately really, hard. Really proud of you. So the, the, the ending of the year kind of came abruptly for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what are some things that you feel like? you really missed on the year ending the way that it did? Uh, I think what I missed the most was the track season uh -huh. because it's funny because this all ended the day of our first track meet. Oh, really? So, yes, uh, we were already in our, uh, our clothes and everything, about to load the bus, and our coach tells us that they canceled the track meet. So that was probably the worst thing because we've been training for like three months before that. Right. And so we're just expecting to start getting to work then. And at the first week, it was like, well, it's just the first week. We'll come back the next week, and then we'll continue with the season. But right. uh, that's not what happened. Didn't but, happen. Oh, so that's man. probably, like, the most like, thing that I'm bummed about, but just because how much work we put in to have right. it, like, stop. Yeah. But yeah. just other things, like uh, prom is one thing that never happened, just some of those memory things. But I think, for me, one thing I missed the most, the social aspect of school. Yeah. Just seeing your friends in the hallway are talking to them. Right, right. Well, what about graduation? Oh yeah, that too. Well, for me personally, the graduating part, like the whole ceremony, that wasn't a big deal to me. Right. Uh, when we were in Hawaii, we kind of came across this tradition where people would put lays, like a ton of lays on right. the graduates. And I remember when Philippe was graduating last year, I said to my mom, that's what I want to have. I want to have a ton of lays right. given to me. So that was kind of a Thing that didn't get to happen because I don't have that ceremony. Right. But um, we went to take pictures the other day in a buffalo. You know, he's from Hawaii. Right. His family sent out a ton of lays. Really? So, yes, so I got to have <laughs> that, which was a good, I yeah. think that made up for not having sure. the graduation part. Oh, man. Well, that's exciting then to hear, hear that you got that. And I'm sure you were able to take pictures with it. Yes, we took pictures. I don't know if any of them are here, but. Okay, I'll show well, hopefully you. they'll be on here in just a yes, bit, but I'd like maybe, to see maybe. them here in just a few minutes. So, do you know, are they going to be doing uh, any type of ceremony for you guys, any virtual graduations? Do you know that? Yet? Yes, on the 22nd of May, they're going to do all the high schools in this area. They're going to kind of live stream a ceremony. Obviously, uh -huh. we're not going to be in attendance like there personally, but <clears throat> right. I'm not really sure what they're going to do either, but I guess they're going to... Uh, have people talking about the awards that the students got okay. and they're still going to run through I guess call out everyone's name So basically everything in graduation except except the people going to walk across the stage walk across the yeah. stage. I guess right. I can just walk across my living room and they call the yeah. but <laughs> just Put for your kicks. boxing gloves on and <laughs> go at it man. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exciting. Okay, so high school basically for you is pretty much over mm -hmm. Okay what about the fall? Now, this is exciting. I want you to uh, tell everybody again, not bragging. I'll brag for you. You don't have to mm -hmm. brag on yourself. Okay. Uh, what, what, is, what are you going to be doing in the fall? Okay, so next fall, I'm going to be at West Point in West New York. Point. Yeah, so. West Point. There you, oh, my goodness. Yep. All right. Well, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Are you excited? I'm super excited. So, yep, I just... When, 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 do you, when do you think you're going to be ready to go? When, when do you plan on leaving? I plan on leaving probably the 28th of, Ju of June, uh, maybe 28th or 27th, because I have to be there the morning of the 29th. So I uh, have maybe yeah. like a month and a half left. 
okay. where I'm supposed to go. All right. So West Point, man, that's a that's a big deal. It's a, that's a, it's a, it's a big pretty deal. big yeah. Explain to people very quickly, because it, unlike just another college, you don't just apply and mm -hmm. they go through the process and, and accept you. With West Point, it's a bigger deal. What are some of the steps you had to do to get into West Point? Yes. So with the application itself, I probably started probably like a year ago from today. Um, the first things that you have to do is just get your name in like their uh, in their book so they know that you're interested. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's kind of hard because it's a lot of waiting and there's right. a lot of things that you have to get. So um, the first thing, just turning your transcripts from your high school, getting your testing scores, which might have been one of the most stressful parts. <laughs> and um, a thing that you don't have to do in other schools that you apply for is like a, a PT test type of thing. So okay. you have to uh, do certain physical exercises to show that you kind of can do what they ask you to do. Right. And honestly, the application to go to a school like West Point is kind of like two college applications in one because there's another application you have to get to get um, a nomination from like a state senator or uh -huh. a congressman, the vice president, or even the president. And so that application is another thing because that's more essays, more sending in transcripts, a picture of yourself, yeah. and just a lot of things like that. Right. Wow, that is pretty grueling. Now, mm -hmm. now you also, you, you did apply for the Naval Academy, am I, I did. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and did you get accepted to that one? Well, I don't know, because I dropped my application. You dropped it, okay. Yes. Because I knew you were you were deep into the process. Yeah, I was. So, uh, I finished a lot of my work my the summer of my junior year. Uh -huh. So, when I started my senior year, I didn't really have a whole lot of things to do. By that point, it was just waiting on the nomination. Okay. And... Uh, I think a big reason why I chose West Point is because there was a guy at West Point who I go to school with his sister-in-laws, so they were able to give him some things about me, and he was kind of helping me push me right. through more. Right. And at the Navy, I still had a few more things I had to do, so right. I was like, West Point sounds good, and my dad's <laughs> Army, so I was like, Army sounds like a right. good life. So, so you go to West Point. What's your commitment after West Point to the Army? Yes, so... I think it's like five years of active service, mm -hmm. and there's other options where you can do reserve or National Guard. I'm not really sure about like, right. the specifics, but I know it's like five years of active, which well, is what I plan to do. Right. That's what that's what your career wanted, mm -hmm. wanted to be. Correct. Yeah, I want to make a career in the Army. Okay. As far okay. as I know now, but I'm young, so I don't, you know, <laughs> but I yeah. want to go all the way. Sure, sure. Well, that's really exciting, man, and mm -hmm. we're proud of you. And we're getting a whole lot of people here that are just sending in very proud of you excited for you excited for you i will go ahead and tell you one though one of them was your brother and he said he dominated that match well so, <laughs> i don't I, know i i don't want to say anything i mean i know a lot of the church people are watching yeah. and i want him to come back here with hold his head high so yeah there you go all he, right you know <laughs> but we'll let it we'll let him claim it but yeah, yeah you are getting a whole lot of people here Joseph, that are talking about how proud they are of you and, well, and what thanks. you're doing. We're we're looking forward to uh, uh, seeing what God's going to do for you. Mm -hmm. um, what what are some things that you see God's leading in as you're through the whole process? School ending abruptly, getting uh, not getting to graduate per se, acceptance and staying home. What what what, are, what do you see God leading? And is there something God's been trying to teach you through this? You think? I've definitely learned. I've definitely seen a whole lot of different uh, things about God through this break. Uh, I think one good thing that's come from this is I no longer have an excuse not to read my Bible because there's like 24 <laughs> hours a day. I'm not obviously I can't go anywhere. No school. No homework. So no excuses. Just that none that just the ones that I could make. So uh, I've done that. And I keep telling myself that we're all surprised that this happened. Obviously, no one expected this to happen, but God knew Amen. this was going to happen. So he's not surprised by it, and he's not freaking out buying all the toilet paper. So <laughs> um, I just tell myself that right. and trying to keep a positive mindset and uh, know that some people have it worse than Amen. we do here because okay. I can still eat food every day. I have toilet paper, <laughs> and some people don't have those. We we are glad you have things. that. So anyway. yep. Well, great. That, and, and God is 
as you said, not surprised by anything that goes on. He's in control of it. But we're real excited mm -hmm. for you. We're proud of you. I'm proud to be your pastor and, yes, and thank you. to be your friend. And man, we're, we're supporting you. We're going to be there with you. Well, before we, we wrap up, uh, we, we do have a video uh, that we want to show the people of your life and growing up. And so uh, John has put this together. So uh, John, if you want to, let's go ahead and, and, and roll that video. Real roll quick. the clip. Do it one more time, man. That's all right. We can't get enough of it. Great pictures, and uh, en enjoyed getting to see you growing up, and, mm -hmm. and uh, all the things that went on. And so we're again really proud of you. We're excited for you, and we know Thank God's you. got some good stuff for you. But before you go, we do have a little gift that we want to give you from gift. the church and for our youth group. And we just want to say again, congratulations and thank you for everything that you're that you've done for our youth group. You've been a great leader. Thank uh, we're you. really going to miss you around here, but we're looking forward to getting to see you uh, do great things. And we know Thank God's you. got some good stuff. Do you mind before we go if I pray over you? Oh, yes, sure. Okay. Please. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight and just celebrate with Joseph the, the things that you've done in his life. God, he's a great young man, and we thank you for allowing us to have the privilege of getting to know him, to be a part of his life, to watch him grow up these last several years. And and God, just see the young man that he's become. And now as he gets ready to take on this uh, next step, that, Father, you would just guide him as he goes to West Point. And, God, you would give him strength and courage to, uh, to, to go through the things that are going to be required of him there over the next several years. And, God, that you would let him be that Christian example uh, there at, at West Point. And Father, let him represent you well and, and display Christ in all that he does. We pray for his mom and his dad. And God, we thank you for the example that they have set for him so that he could be able to see uh, Christian parents and grow up in a Christian home and Father, follow in their footsteps. So we just ask your favor be upon him. And God, we pray that you would just bless him and take him and just use him in a great way. And God will give you praise for Joseph and all that he does for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Joseph, God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, really, again, proud of you. And you've got a lot of people here that are really behind you all the way. And if you ever need anything, you know people at First Baptist West are there for you. Okay? Absolutely. All right. Man, thank you for joining us thank tonight. You. It's, it's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed this. So uh, as, as as we go on from here, uh, continue to pray for Joseph and everything that he's doing. Pray for his family because I know it's difficult when your child leaves home and especially going to New York and uh, doing all that he's going to be doing. Well, we're going to take just a moment, again, thanking you for joining us, but we're going to step into a moment of Bible study and uh, just have a word for you that I hope is going to be encouraging and uplifting and just be able to speak to your heart through what God has laid on my heart for you. So John, let's go ahead and enter into that Bible study time. Hi everybody, I'm glad that you're joining us tonight and I hope you're enjoying our program. We're really having a good one tonight. And uh, But before we continue on, I want to take just a moment to share a quick thought out of the Word of God with you. Uh, I'm going to be looking at tonight out of the book of Judges chapter 14. And uh, the, the title of this devotion will be The Source of Our Power. 
You know, many of us know the story of Samson. And, and if you're like me, when we think about Samson, we think about this big, muscled-up guy, man, that was this, uh, this intimidating man who walked around and probably took everybody's attention every time he walked into the room. And if you've watched movies and other historical things, uh, documentaries about Samson, they always portray him as this, as this huge, muscle-bound guy that had great strength. But I want to share something with you tonight because I think if we're not careful, we begin to think that those are the type of guys only that God could use or those type of people that have extra abilities. And, and so sometimes it brings us to a point where we don't think, well, we can be used. But I want to share a verse of Scripture with you, if you don't mind. And it's in the book of Judges, chapter 14. And in the book of Judges 14, verse 5, it says, So Samson went down uh, temp to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now, to, surpri to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he tore the lion apart as one would have torn apart a young goat though he had nothing in his hand but he did not tell his father or his mother what he had done now what I want you to notice here in this text is that we know about Samson's strength but when and, but what we looked at here is that Samson wasn't able to really to do anything until the Bible says in verse verse 5 and 6 that the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him so what I wanted us to picture is this normal guy who a lot of people didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that all of a sudden God was able to do an extraordinary thing through him. And so it wasn't any part of his physical prowess that allowed him to do what he did. It was the power of God. That he, the God, Spirit of God came mighty upon him. And, and uh, in Judges chapter 15 verse 20, we know that it continues on that he did a lot of great things. Then he met Delilah. And Delilah kept wanting to know the secret of his, of his strength. And, and he finally told her. And this, one of the scariest texts in the, in the scripture that I see is in verse 20 of chapter uh, 16. And it says, And she, being Delilah, said to the Philistines, They are upon you. So he, Samson, woke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. You see, Samson wasn't able to, to do anything. He wasn't able to break free like he had done all these other times. And the question you have to ask yourself, he was still the same guy. He was still the same size. His muscles were still the way they were. What was the difference? And the Bible says that the Lord had left him. But the scary thing is Samson didn't realize it because when he woke up, he still looked the same. He still sounded the same. Everything about him was the same, except now the Lord had left him. And so then we, we look and we see that they were able to capture him because it wasn't his strength had gone, but the power of God was not working through him, which then took away his strength. The case in point is if we move on over, Samson has been captured. He's now into uh, uh, been blinded and, and been, been a slave to the Philistines. But then they wanted to bring him in and show off and show off what they have done to this, this great man that, that everyone had feared and we see then in the same chapter, verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 28, Samson now is wanting to beg God to have one more amount of strength, one more powerful act. And this is, then Samson called to the Lord saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. Just this once, O God, that I may be with one blow, take vengeance on the Philistines, for my two eyes and Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple and he braced himself against them one on his left and one on his right then Samson said let me die with the Philistines and he pushed with all of his might and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it so you see here what I'm what my point is is that nothing had changed about Samson in any of these points except that the power of God the spirit of God was on him so we might look and we say that our power that we have as Christians, we don't feel like we're a Samson. We don't have that intimidating presence. Maybe we don't feel like we have a lot of abilities for God. But I want to encourage you tonight to understand this thing as I get ready to wrap this up, is that our power won't come from our, our physical prowess. Not how many weights we lift or how much weight I can lift or how, how, how fast I can run. Doesn't matter how I look. My looks aren't all going to be in that. It's not my intellect and it's not even my talent that is going to allow me to serve God. I could have all of these and be absent of the Spirit. And I still don't have the power that God can use in me. 
Oh, but my friend, listen to me. When I turn myself over to the Lord, you turn yourself over to the Lord. I don't care what situation you're in, maybe even the hopeless situation right now, but if you'll turn yourself over and say, God, give me the power. God, give me the power to get over this, get through this. It's the Spirit of God that brings us our strength. So Christians, it's not our looks, it's not our brains, it's not our talents. None of that is what God's looking for. He's looking for a heart that He can work through. So I want to encourage you tonight. Let the Spirit of the Lord work in you. Don't be down on yourself because of you may be looking at someone else and seeing what they have. Focus on God. Let His Spirit come upon you. And it says, as it said again in verse 5 and 6, that the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. That he was able to do great things. So tonight, my friends, you can do those great things. Let me pray with you. Father, watch over us now as we continue on in this program. God, speak to our hearts and encourage us. Encourage anyone who's watching, Lord, that they would understand that you can do some mighty things in their lives if they'll just surrender themselves to you. Might they do that tonight in the, by the power of Jesus to do mighty things for you and to make it through these difficult times by you working through us. And Lord, might our church glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, now I want to get back to our next segment. We hope you enjoy the rest of the program. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back. And I hope that uh, you have had enjoyed our program up to this point. And just want to continue to ask that you allow God's Spirit to work in you and through you. And remember, as I said earlier, it is God's power working through us that brings about the, the power of, of success. So I want to encourage you with that. So we move on, and our, our next guest here, we're excited to have part of our praise team here with us. And this is uh, Keith Saar and Kaylee Corson. And uh, how are you guys doing? Good. I'm pretty good. Good. I'm kind of hungry. I forgot to eat dinner. But yeah. Now I'm doing pretty good. Well, y'all yeah, kind of got, got rushed here early, and then you realized that you were going to be on the last part of the program, so y'all could have actually had dinner, but... Well, he's the early person, uh, okay. and he told me I had to be here, so that's why we didn't eat. Well, we also, we, we didn't tell you you were going to be last, because you might not have, we might have just been still waiting on you to get here, so sorry, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> we we try we try and I know you try too so anyway so everything going all right for you guys yeah very good, Let's go. so, good. so how are y'all doing through this quarantine business uh, for me uh, nothing's really slowed down uh, my job stayed open and this job here I still have to be here on Wednesdays and Sundays so yeah <laughs> everything's good God's still providing and nothing's slowed me down so so you have to be here on Wednesday I mean I get to there be you here go on all right thank you that, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Danny Toombs, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I know, I know that's one of his pet peeves is when you say have to and get to. And, yeah. Especially, especially when the pastor's the one talking to you. That, yeah. It might be better to say, oh, I, I still get I, to I get, be here. I still get to be here. There you go. Katie, what about you? How have things been going with huh? you? Kind of the same uh, work. I work for a bank, so they don't close. Um, they, they've changed things up, and it's just three of us in a tiny room to social distance us. So uh -huh. it's interesting. But uh, it's made work a little hectic. But what about some of your activities that y'all normally would do? I mean, with that, with church and different things. Um, How has I mean, that changed? Wednesdays have slowed down a bit. You know, I used to rush from work to here to practice for uh, for recharge, but now we don't have to really do that anymore. But I think we other don't than get that, to do that anymore. <laughs> she had to do that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was what she had uh, to do. And there's no uh, Sunday nights either. Right. But that said. So, so uh, with, with everything that's been going on, and uh, you guys have been helping lead worship as far as the youth have been concerned now for what about three three years maybe? I think I, I, I got brought you like on that. to do is that. It three? John, how long have you been here? Two years. This is three, three years. Because yeah, we did three, it the year before you came. Right. Three years. So, so uh, you guys did that, and y'all did a great job for the youth. And I know when, when John came that he kept you going and, and had you doing all that. Well, now, then you actually were part of our praise team, but you were on the vocal side of it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you enjoyed doing that. and Yeah. yeah. yeah then all of a sudden, your roles have changed <laughs> all of, uh, just yeah. big time. Overnight. Just, yeah, basically, yeah, really overnight, overnight. <laughs> yeah, overnight. So for everyone that, that's watching that may not know, uh, 
Keith and Kaylee both were on our praise team, but the, as they said, they were singing on our praise team. Doug uh, was our, our music leader at that time and uh, did a great job and, and helped them come along really well with that. But then Doug decided to, as I, I tell everybody, he decided to break up with me and he retired and, and he and, and Linda moved to Norman. And I, I know Linda and them, are, I know they're watching tonight, so uh, guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, so then we thought, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask Keith, to step in for a couple of weeks, right? It was, it was going to be a couple of weeks. And once those two weeks were over, uh, Pastor Harold asked me, can you do it through June? And I said, <laughs> sure. And then towards the end of June, he said, okay, can you pray about it a little bit longer? We might need you to do July as well. And I was like, sure, I can do July. And then towards the end of July, he said, okay, one more month, August, and then <laughs> that'll be it. And then August goes by and same thing happens. Like, okay, we're going to need you to do this for a few more months. I was like... <laughs> All right, all right. I'm well, in room, I guess. What I didn't tell you was June, July of 2020. Oh no, you didn't. You didn't <laughs> no, I didn't. I forgot part. that part. Okay, well, actually, I didn't think about that. I part. didn't read the contract. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. my fault. There you go. That's the, the, those fine print, buddy. The fine print is what gets you. But uh, so yeah, Keith stepped in, and we thought it was going to be just for a little bit, and and man, it ended up here. We're almost a, on a year now. I think it's been a year. I think this coming Sunday is a year. Okay. Wow. I didn't realize that. Time yeah, flies when you're having fun. Yeah, it was end of May, May. Night. May 19th right. was the first Sunday that I Well, had I know what started. makes it is, is that Doug came back and did our uh, 4th of July stuff, too. And mm -hmm. so that, uh -huh. okay, so, yeah, it's been a year. Well, we'll have to throw a party for your <laughs> one year. There you go. One year. All right. So you got kind of thrown into a leadership position that was supposed to be an interim for just a short time. And now here you are. I was supposed to be the interim to the interim. Yes. I ended up being the interim. Yeah, that, that's how it worked. You were, he was to be the interim to the interim. Now you're the interim. So, But you're doing a great job. Okay. I, 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 I commend you for that. You've really uh, kept things going really well. So Kaylee. Kaylee was part of our uh, praise team singing, even after Keith stepped in as the interim. Uh, and then, unbeknownst to us, Christine, our piano player, she decided that she and John, her husband, were going to move to Oklahoma City. And so she was going to give that up. So we asked Kaylee, would you for a short time <laughs> play our piano for us? And you tell the rest of it. So what happened from there? Um, well, I don't even think Keith asked me to. It was just, you're playing the piano and it's just kind of been playing the piano since. I mean, I figure it's once we hire somebody for the position, they'll start looking for a piano player. But <laughs> I mean... So, so for, for both of you, never have really, I mean, you played for the youth some, and uh, you, you led for the youth, and every now and then, Doug would have you lead for him for just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has it changed for you being the people? You are the leader, you are the pianist. How has that changed? And either one of you can answer first. Those guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. So I guess just the responsibility of having to be the the leader, like not having anyone else to like lean on or like, well, I still have people I could ask questions if I have questions, uh -huh. but to be like the one in charge, the one making the decisions and um, just leading that worship team and getting practices together and picking right. music. Uh, even a couple times when Doug asked me to lead when he was here, right? there were a couple times I didn't pick the music because he, he got sick last minute. And there's a, there's a couple times I did get to pick the music too, but right. there was a couple times where it was last minute. He said, I don't think I can sing, so can you help me and lead worship? And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I think I've grown a little bit. Just when I get nervous, I talk really fast. So I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, and just talking in public, because I'm not a public speaker, don't like public speaking. Right. And... It's, so I think I've grown a little bit in that aspect of having to speak out in front of people. Yeah. Well, this will help you being able to speak in front of tens <laughs> of people. <laughs> Not tens of thousands, but tens of people. So maybe this will help you. But you're doing a great job. Katie, what about you? How, how has it changed um, for you to be the, the pianist now? Well, it's. I feel like it was a big responsibility and I kind of... I, I feel like I'm not a legit piano player. I just kind of taught myself. So I'm like... I don't know. 
Well, we'll just go with it. Well, that, that's so. <laughs> one. Yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to bring up is that uh, you basically. Uh, when did you start teaching yourself to play the piano? Oh goodness. Um. It was maybe four years ago. Yeah. It hadn't been too long before we started doing the youth. So yeah. it was just, I was sitting at home and I would like want to practice music, but I couldn't because at that time Matthew was living at home. And if Matthew weren't home, I was like, man, I can't practice. So I was just like, I'm going to pick it out myself and just kind of started looking up chords and figured it out myself. Well, we're getting a lot of people now talking that are watching saying, you know, you guys are a great blessing. You do a great <laughs> job. And they're really proud of you. So, so you, you're now leading. Uh, what, what's that like standing up in, in, in the worship service and knowing that your job is to lead and your job basically as the pianist is to be one of the key instruments? How did that feel the first couple times you did that? Oh, the first Knowing it was times. on you now. I felt so underqualified, but uh, mm -hmm. what what kept ringing in my ear was what uh, Danny Toombs would always say was, "God doesn't call the qualified; he call he qualifies the called." Amen. And so that that kind of just stuck with me, and that's kind of what helped me get through those first few weeks. And uh, yeah, yeah. So what what about you? Knowing now that. You're, you're the pianist for First Baptist West until further notice. <laughs> well, it's kind of surreal. Like, I never I never felt like I would ever be in this position. And it's kind of, like, it's humbling because, like, look, it's like he said, you know, you don't, I don't feel qualified for the position, but, you know, we're, we're doing it. So, yeah. I mean, it is kind of, and like what Danny always says, um, it kind of runs through my mind, like, He's got us doing it, and we're we're doing it. It may not be like high quality, but we're we're getting through it, and we're working together. So, <laughs> well, it is pretty high quality. You guys are selling yourself quite short, but you do a great job. As a matter of fact, uh, Kaylee and I I, I talked that. Uh, Sometimes we, we say that when she really hits it, man, Kay, <laughs> I say, man, Kaylee, you showed up. And Kaylee said, I showed up big time, you know, so we, we kind of, so you do show up a lot. So we appreciate it, especially on songs that you have to play and Keith puts you in the leading role of, of the singing of, the, of that song. So mm -hmm. that's got to be pretty tough. It takes a lot of practice. Um... I, I had to practice a lot not having to look at the keys so I could kind of focus on the words. Right. So it's just a lot of, I would just go like just playing chords over and over and over and not having to look and just like repetitions. So, right. but I feel, I think, I don't know who I've told this to, but it's usually like right before, like I'm so nervous, like my stomach's in knots. And I think I told you like mm -hmm. my heart rate, I check my right. Fitbit, it's like 130 <laughs> and I'm like feeling like I'm going to have a heart attack. But it's as soon as like I start singing, it's just like peace. And it's, it's cause I don't know, it's God pouring out of me. And it's just like, I, I'm not even thinking about the fact that I'm playing and singing. It's just, I don't know how to describe oh, it. Oh, no. That, that's great. Well, same thing, <laughs> same thing with leading, the same thing even with yeah. preaching. Uh, it's the same thing. As, it's almost like an instant. It's like a switch. It's just like, it's okay. Like, we're good. Well, you know, I feel that. And I tell all y'all the same thing, you know, especially now that we don't have a congregation there. Uh -huh. The countdown and we're waiting on John. He said, you know, you got a minute. We're going to go live. And then, I mean, it's all of a sudden it's kind of like, Oh no, on. here we go. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like, I, I get so nervous even doing the welcoming. Uh -huh. uh, but then all of a sudden, once I get to preaching, then it's kind of like, okay, here we go. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm sure it's, so it, it's the same. So if you start yeah. feeling it, don't think, <laughs> please don't feel like you're the only one because yeah. all of us up there are feeling the exact same thing. So what, what is it like though uh, for you now, both of you, uh, you've been doing it for some time now with a congregation. Two mm -hmm. times a day, eight o'clock and ten forty-five. Now all of a sudden we shift and out just uh, instantly we don't have anyone in the sanctuary with us. How, how how's that affected you? How you do things now? How, how does it feel doing that? Um, I think it's hard. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you can go. Uh, I don't. It's hard because. I mean, like, as a team, like, you can feel us worshiping, but sometimes, like, just hearing the congregation, like, when right. it's the instruments drop out and it's just our voices, 
there's just something about that that like warms my heart like hearing right. the congregation singing along with us and like I know everybody is at home but it's just something about having like a whole room of people all right. praising it just I don't know it, it's a different feeling right it, it absolutely is yeah. because go ahead oh yeah I'm that yeah same thing I, I miss that feeling of like just all the music dropping and it's just the congregation and the, the praise band singers the choir singing and no instruments just voices praising god that's that's the part that i miss the most but um w the first week with just empty uh con em empty congregation it kind of felt like just another rehearsal but i knew in my mind and my heart i can't treat this like just another rehearsal because right. once once we start there's no stopping and no fixing anything it's just all right this is it it's, yeah. Well, the, the one thing that, and it's the same for me as well, not being able to have, but the, the advantage I have over you as you're leading in the worship, you basically have me standing off to the right <laughs> singing and, and along, but that's it. So out in front of you is nobody. The advantage I have is that when you're through, you all, at least the eight of you, go sit out in the car, out there, and I have somebody that I can make eye contact with. As a matter of fact, Carrie one time said she feels like all I do is stare at her. I said, well, you're one of eight, so I don't have very many people to stare at. Uh, so I do have that little advantage as I have uh, the praise team sitting spread out, as a matter of fact, but at least have that, because there is something to be said about that corporate worship. Man, it, it, there's something special with God's people getting together and singing and uh, praising the Lord and, 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 and I know as, as music people you have to sense that just as much as I do when I'm preaching. So uh, we're coming up in a couple of weeks. Remember May 31st. We're coming up in a couple of weeks getting some people back. How do you feel about that? Excited. I'm ready. I want, I want to have that congregation that gathered worship. Uh -huh. It's just a different atmosphere and I miss it a lot. Yeah. I'm a people person. I need people. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, we're, 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 it's coming up, and so we're hoping that, that people will come. And now it's going to be different uh, the way we're going to have to do things. It's not just come in and sit and, and fellowship and, and hang out. It's, you know, there's going to have to be some guidelines that we'll have to. But as far as the, the, the praise team, and, and, and I am concerned, it's still the same, man. People are going to be out there. So really uh, looking uh, forward to it. Now, how do you feel through this year-long interim and, and however long? When, when did you start? Beginning of the year. January Beginning of January. 1st, okay, yeah. Whatever, in the January. January. Right. Okay, that's right. How do you feel? You, you mentioned growing a little bit. Being the, the leader now, being responsible for the worship, being the pianist, being responsible for your duties as the pianist, how do you feel God's grown you through this? I feel I like, I don't know, I, I've i had to learn to have patience with myself because there's been like, hey, you know, can you pick this part out? And it's kind of the insecurity of like, I'm, I'm not a piano player. I can't play this. I can't play this. But like uh -huh. the having to sit there and like repeatedly like practice it over and over and not get frustrated, um, I think just... I've had to grow and having patience with myself and like, it's okay to mess up and like, just keep going. And I don't know. I think I've had to grow in patience like with myself. Okay, good. Keith, what about you? Um, I think just, I know I've grown kind of in the ministry, like as far as being more comfortable up on the stage. Right. Whereas before I, I wasn't and. uh, I even taught myself how to play the guitar so I could lead from the guitar. And it's so hard to read the music and the chords and play the, play the right uh, chords and sing the right notes while still trying to put all of my focus on uh, what really matters. And that's uh, that we're praising God, we're worshiping God. Right. So just getting like all those little distractions like out of my mind and just letting God just work through me is, that's something that's kind of, gotten a lot better as this has gone on. Right. Good. Well, you know, that's one of the things that I've also talked to the priest about, and I've had to learn it over and over again as a pastor, is that my preaching is my act of worship. And so sometimes I get concerned about, is it, is it the joke in the right spot? Am I staying with the guideline, with the, my outline? Is my timing and, and all that? And then eventually you just have to say, you know what? 
man, this is just worship. I got to worship God. And so I appreciate you, you saying that. And that's what I hope all the praise team is doing, whether you're singing, playing the instruments, uh, whatever it is you're doing, that we're still worshiping uh, along with the congregation. As I, as I told Joe before, uh, I feel like my, when I preach, I, I just preach to God and everybody gets to, be, gets to hear it. And that's the same thing with leading worship. You guys are basically playing and singing to God it's just we all get to join in and, and uh-huh. get to be a part of it. And, man, we're excited about hopefully, again, in two weeks, man, having <laughs> oh, some yeah. people coming and, and uh, experiencing that worship game. Because, I mean, we've had some, uh, man, at the, when, when we go off the air uh, from our live stream, man, we all go, man, that, that was good. Uh-huh. That was good. And I hope people at home are getting to feel a part of what we're feeling because uh-huh. you guys have done a done a great job in leading in the worship and, and we're excited about what God's going to be doing. So what, what do you think God has taught you about, say, ministry in in all this year that you've been thrown thrown out and just basically thrown into the deep end and said, there you go, Keith, have at it. What, what has God tried to show you through even the coronavirus stuff? Is there something that you would say, this is what God's showing me that maybe help encourage someone tonight um so yeah one thing that has really changed in my heart was i had a lot of pride i'm like i'm a really good singer but yeah. like throughout this like whole experience i've i felt god telling me like i need to be humble and uh-huh. just be thankful for the the gifts that he's given me because i know that those can be taken away and so i just i just like to sit back and just be thankful for it the the this opportunity and just especially like you also encouraging me um through worship like making me or not making me but telling me (laughs) you 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 should take your guitar home and practice and practice and practice and practice so just having like encouragement and that really helps um I forgot what the question was. Oh, that's sorry. Right. You, 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 done, you did well answering it. You did well. Katie, what about you? What has God taught you about ministry in this? Um, oh. I think it was it was kind of hard to go from we did the youth and we were co-leading it. So I had some of the control. <laughs> and, you know, like we would both pick the music. I would be the one putting it together and like just... Uh having to kind of let him lead it and not be like no it needs to go this way or uh, I had I've had to learn to kind of be like you know this is my role you know Mm -hmm. I I've and not like I tell him in uh, practice like I'll follow you whatever way you're gonna go like I'll just follow where you're going right and I think I've had to kind of learn to be like I don't want to say like know my place, but know like he's he's leading, mm-hmm. and I just need to whatever he says goes, and just kind yeah. of take take that part. Right. I'm not a dictator. <laughs> oh no no yeah. no! I don't think anyone ever knows you would think that you're a dictator. I just don't. It's see great that relationship practice. There so you go. Gotta be the yes. be a, sub, a submissive. Yes, Girlfriend. there you go. There you go. All right. Well, listen, I, I want you to know that I'm proud of both of you. You guys have done a great job, and I love Thank both you. of you. And uh, it's been an honor to, to serve with you. Um, I know that we put a lot on you, but you've done well. Uh, and God has provided for you guys to be able to do that. And all he asks is that you stay available to what he has. Uh, because we don't know the future. We don't know how long this is all going to last. We don't know... The, the, even the weeks coming up, we don't know what's going to happen there, but God does. And you guys have done a great job. I know our people appreciate it. Man, we've had a lot of great comments here, for, and I hear it every Sunday uh, after church. People are commending you about the job you're doing. And I think even more, as I always say, uh, I, what I appreciate more about you is less of your talent, but more of your heart. Because I know you both have a heart for this, and that shows through. And that's what I want to encourage you. Stay humble and stay with your heart and let God take you. But you guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. And uh, before we close out, I want to pray over if you, that that's okay. All right. All right? Well, let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. God, I thank you for Keith and Kaylee. And Lord, I know that um, through this situation, they were put in a pretty tough spot. And But Lord, they're, they're coming through because I know they're depending on you 
Uh, they're not trusting in themselves. Lord, they have a heart for our people, for our church, for our worship time. And so I pray, God, that you would continue to just use them and bless them uh, with that special heart. And God, as they go from here, that you could just grow them in leaps and bounds in the ministry. Lord, I know you have great things in store for them. So I pray that you'd show favor in all that they do and that, God, their hearts would uh, just stay faithful to you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be their pastor and their friend and to guide them and to encourage them. And, Lord, we just look forward to all the times that we have together from this point on. And we do look forward to that day that we get to have people back in our worship service. And, Lord, we can worship you together. But just continue to show them your direction. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. Well, amen. I want to thank you for being a part of our program tonight. Hope you've enjoyed uh, what you've seen. Uh, Joseph did a great job, and Keith and Kaylee also did a great job, and uh, got to learn a lot about them. And we just appreciate you joining us. want to remind you about our M28 ministry, things that are going on. Please, we'll, we'll be needing this next Tuesday, some bread, some uh, desserts and, and vegetables. Help us with that. And also, uh, join us on our live stream service at 1045 uh, this Sunday morning. We're going to have a great time of worship. And remember, go to our webpage, and on that webpage are, are our uh, Zoom meetings for small groups. Click on one of those on Sunday morning. It'll take you directly to that meeting. So until then, man, we're looking forward to seeing you. Until then, have a great, great week. God bless you and know that I love you. And I'm honored to serve as pastor of First Baptist West. Y'all have a great week. Good night.